My name is Nathaniel Exum. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. That's where I was born and reared. Uh, I came to Washington, D.C. at the time to attend Howard University. The March on Washington, how did you first hear about the march? Um... Well, I came to Washington as an activist in, from Memphis, Tennessee. So I had been familiar with the civil rights struggle and the issues that we all as our African Americans, which we were not called at that time, but blacks com had been confronted with segregation, Jim Crow, and all of those issues. So I had a background and I had been an activist in Memphis uh, in the struggle. So did Previously, I come from Memphis as, as an activist in the struggle in Memphis, Tennessee. There, I was a part of the NAACP and its youth movement. There was a group of us young people who decided that we wanted to take over things, that we, we felt that things weren't moving fast enough for us to get equality and equity. And we figured that our parents were slow at that time. And we felt that we could do a better job, so we wanted to take it over. So we formed a group in Memphis called the Progressive Youth Organization. In fact, they even got arrested in a Memphis, Tennessee, because what had happened, uh, because we couldn't get anyone to become conscious and aware of our dilemma, we decided that maybe we ought to do is to go to a white church. So there was a, a fellow who came down from Boston, Massachusetts in the summer, um, I believe it was 1960, and he said, and he wanted to participate in us in this progressive youth organization. So we decided one Saturday, while we were strategizing, that we wanted to go to a, a white church to see could we gain their sympathy for our issue. And so we went on the Sunday following and Sunday morning, and we went to a white church, which was probably the largest congregation, white congregation in Memphis, Tennessee, Bellevue Baptist Church. So we went, and of course, around, he and I got arrested for going to the church. So I came to Washington with that in my background. What happened is during the time, he, he knew a friend here in Washington, a young lady who was involved in the march on Washington in the preparations of it. I had found out, we had found out that there was a local pastor here in Washington. His name was Reverend Walter Fountainroy. He used to be a congressman for the District of Columbia when they became and got some, some privilege, which they were allowed. They really don't call them congressmen. They call them delegates. They have from, from in fact, Eleanor Holmes all. Norton holds that position now. But anyway, he was appointed in charge of logistics for Dr. Martin Luther King here in the District of Columbia. And this young lady knew him, so they were uh, getting volunteers to help out with that. My friend, Reverend James, knew her, and she asked us if we would like to volunteer to do it. And so we did, and we became a part of the logistics committee here in Washington, preparing for the March on Washington. We knew where the buses, we had a plan where many of the buses would go several places around the city where they would park and where, and I was, our job was to stand as the buses into the city to tell them where they were going to go and to tell certain people as they marched to, to the mon monument grounds where they are supposed to go and sort of stay in a certain area. Were you staying? story last, last, last week that Walter Fontenot, who was in charge of the logistics, said that they couldn't find a speaker system to work for the monument grounds. However, he did find a contract, and the contractor came and put it put it in the system. 24 hours before 
the march was to happen, someone came and booted the system. So he was upset because they wouldn't have a speaker system that would work for the monument grounds on the day of. But he came and they prayed and the guy came and was able to fix the system to get it working. 15 minutes after it was supposed to start, the system was able to, to work. So oh. that was a challenging moment. I was able to take my activism and parlayed it into becoming a state legislator in Maryland. So I spent 36 years as a legislature in the Maryland legislature. If you participate, if you're able to get out and make people aware that changes can happen for the better and for all human beings, not just for one specific group, but we all would benefit from that change.